What's up, you wonderful people, and welcome back to the channel. Today, we're talking all about setting up your projects in DaVinci Resolve and choosing all the right settings. So Resolve is a professional finishing software. So coming from other NLEs like Premiere, for example, it's gonna seem a little bit more involved and sometimes overwhelming, but that's what we're here to clear up today. So get ready. All right, right before we get started though, if you're new here, welcome. New videos are coming out on Mondays and Wednesdays. So we cover everything from filmmaking tutorials to product reviews and so much more. So if you're not already, make sure you subscribe as it helps me out and the channel a lot. And I thank you for your support. Make sure you also ring that bell so that you get notified when I post new videos and you don't miss a thing. With that, let's get started. All right, so we open up Resolve and we're greeted with where we wanna open up our project. Resolve automatically sets up a database for you, which is just a file location to house your projects. If you click on this little icon to the top left, you'll see all of your databases. You have the option to create a new one if you want to separate out your projects uh, from YouTube videos, let's say. Uh, but for now, I'll just leave this all as default. So let's open up a new project. All right, so now we have to set up our project. You always wanna do this first so that everything is ready to go when you start working. You want all of your settings to be there when you, in, when you start ingesting media into Resolve. You have two options. One, you can go to File, Project Settings, or in the lower uh, right-hand corner here, you have this gear icon. If you hover, you'll see it says Project Settings. Click on that and we get to the settings dialog that opens up. Now, this looks like a lot of options, but let's go through it and you'll see it's not that bad. I won't be going super into detail about all of these settings uh, and tabs, but we'll go over what you need to know to get started and a couple of more advanced settings as well that you need to know. I'll also show you how to create your own presets and save them as default, so you only really have to do this once for similar projects. All right, so first we have our timeline options under the master settings tab. I work with 1080p clips, so especially for YouTube, so I'm gonna leave that at 1920 by 1080. You can also set a resolution not found in the presets, Going to the custom uh, drop down will also do the same thing. For pixel aspect ratio, if you're filming with most lenses and ratios, you're in square. Uh, if you're getting into Cinescope or Anamorphic, you can set that here too. Uh, for me, it's gonna be square. So frame rates, I film in 23976, so my timeline should reflect that. You want your timeline to be in whatever frame rate you usually film in so that it plays back smooth. If you want me to do a more in-depth video on frame rates, let me know, and I can cover that in a different video. Cinema cameras can film at actual 24, but most prosumer, for example, I'm filming on a Canon, will do 23976. My video clips aren't interlaced, so I'll leave that off. Uh, playback, I want to match my timeline so I can see real-time playback, so I'll leave that at 23976 as well. Next, we have video monitoring settings, so that's how you'll see the playback program monitor. If you're monitoring externally, you'll also choose your settings here so it shows up properly on a reference monitor, etc. For my playback, I'll pick HD 1080p 23976. If you're working with 6K or 4K clips, for example, you can also drop the resolution here in order to improve playback. Also, if your monitor is 1080, there's no reason for you to have your video monitoring in 4K because you won't get the benefits of that. Uh, and depending on your system, it might also slow it down if you don't have enough power to keep it going. SDI options and configurations uh, are if you have an SDI capable monitor. I don't, so I'm just gonna leave these at default. Data levels also has to do with external monitoring. Video to reference Rec. 709 and full if you're using full range displays. I'm not gonna worry about it. It doesn't have any effect on how Resolve processes your footage internally. I'm leaving retained sub black and super white data off so it shows clipping. I recommend leaving this off as well for most work unless you know that your color space allows for it and you have some other safety net in place for delivering the broadcast, for example. Bit depth, also for video monitoring. If your display can do 10-bit, then set it to that. I'll do 8-bit for mine. Um, setting to 10-bit will help sometimes avoid banding if your monitor supports 10-bit. We'll leave the rest default since this, get, this gets into much more advanced territory. Optimized media, if you're working with proxies, you'll set that here. If it's 1080p footage, I'll leave uh, proxies to original, but change the codec to something like DMX, HR, HQ, or SQ for 8-bit footage. If your camera outputs MP4 files or H.264, it'll make it a lot easier to work with as MP4 and H.264 files are not easy on your computer. Render cache, I'll leave to DNX HR as well. I'll leave it to cache after five seconds of inactivity. Uh, default is fine there. Sometimes I'll also tell it to cache transitions 
uh, so those playback smooth it. Working folders, you can set that so your media and cache go to another drive if you work that way. Some people don't use their boot drives to also work files, so you can set it to another hard drive that isn't the system one. All right, last one here, frame interpolation is essentially how you want Resolve to process retimed videos. You can adjust this at the clip level, but nearest will either drop or skip frames if needed. Frame blend dissolves some frames together to produce smoother motion. And optical flow is similar to Premiere if you've ever used it there. Basically, it'll analyze the media and estimate motion and basically generate new frames. This produces the smoothest motion, but sometimes you get weird artifacts. So it really depends on your clip and how stable or how much information is there for Resolve to work with. I usually leave this on frame blend. I can adjust it in the inspector on a clip by clip basis if needed as well. Setting motion estimation to enhanced can also improve results. Mine is usually set to enhanced faster. All right, and with that, that covers most of the basic settings. So we're more than halfway there. Let's speed through the rest of these tabs now. So image scaling. You can set that here if you're wanting Resolve to scale your clips up or down. Sharper tends to provide better results when scaling up, and Smoother will provide higher quality when you're scaling down to SD, for example. Bicubic and Bilinear are less processor intensive, which you might want if you're struggling with the other options, or if the project doesn't require super high quality scaling. Override input and output scaling will make these changes apply to the overall project. I usually leave these off. Anti-alias, I usually leave to auto. This has more to do with edges and blurring. Auto usually handles it very well. Input scaling is like your set to frame size in Premiere if media doesn't match your timeline. Center crop won't do anything to the media. If the clip is smaller than your timeline resolution, it'll be surrounded by a black border. And if it's bigger, it'll be cropped out of frame, but it won't rescale the image. Scale full frame will match the shortest dimension and crop the rest. Scale entire image uh, is default and scales the longest dimension up or down and crops the rest. Stretch, I don't really use, uh, but it can be useful for things like anamorphic. I usually leave this set to the default. Output scaling is how Resolve will handle output for monitoring and deliverables. I usually leave this to match timeline settings since I can adjust my deliverable resolutions in the Deliver tab. All right, we're almost there, I promise. Color space is how Resolve works with your color. Best thing about Resolve 17 are these options, which really simplifies everything. If you want an in-depth video on this, let me know as there's a lot to cover here. I'll simplify it the best I can here for simplicity's sake. So DaVinci YRGB is default. Essentially, it's not color managing your clips in this setting. You can leave it like this, but it's not taking full advantage of color data. Resolve comes with a lot of LUTs and Rex 709 conversions for different cameras, so it's better to use color manage and take advantage of these settings. Default Y RGB leaves it up to you to manage your color space transformations uh, where color managed will allow Resolve to do some of that for you. Most of these aren't going to apply to us, but for example, working with raw cinema footage, it's better to use color manage and then drop down to DaVinci wide gamut in order to take full advantage of the color space. You're, you'll still output Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4, which is standard, but you let Resolve take advantage of the entire color space before output, which is ideal. You can also set your LUTs here. If you know what camera you're working with, that way it's Rec. 709 already when you're working with it. I usually set my color to YRGB color managed and leave it to SDR input and I'll put Rec. 709 as well. I'm not filming RAW for YouTube, so I don't need to worry about the rest. If you're working with RAW for projects, you can use the camera RAW settings to specify what profile you're using. For example, you can set it to red if you're using R3D files, set your bit depth, and I usually leave it to camera metadata for the decode so it ingests the media at the settings I originally used, and then I can change it later if I want to in the color tab. And with that, that's most of the default settings that you'll need to know. So now, let me show you how to save all that and make a preset so you don't have to go through this every time. Click on presets and what you want to do is hit save as. It'll ask you to apply your current configuration, so click yes then name it, so I'll save this one as YouTube 1080 16 by nine, hit okay. Now, what you wanna do, if you want this to be the default every time you open up Resolve, is right click that preset and go to save as user default configuration. That will remain highlighted now and new projects will open up with these settings. All right, and that's it, we're done. So I know that was a lot, but it's only a lot the first time. I promise you, once you get familiar with these settings, you'll breeze through these and you'll know how to set it up for every project, but it's important to know where things are. And as with all things, practice makes perfect.
Thank you so much for watching though. If you're enjoying the content, make sure to hit that like button, leave a comment down below, and make sure that you're subscribed. And until next time, go out there and create something. La Revedere.